G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I wanna take you guys through how to use optimal body mechanics or ideal anatomical function to decipher what the best push-up looks like or how to do the best push-up technique. Um, and I think it's a really nice way to do that because we know clinically that the body and our tissues and our joints tend to function best when they're positioned and used a certain way. And I know with push-ups on the internet at least, there's a strong, um, array of opinions and ideas about what a perfect push-up looks like. And that can obviously come back to the depth of the push-up and where your elbows and your shoulders and your hands should be and all these sorts of things. And I think just to take a lot of the conjecture and a lot of the guesswork out of things, we'll talk about it in terms of what we know is best anatomical function. And then hopefully we'll see what an ideal push-up looks like at the end of that conversation. So, so before we get into that, obviously let me know in the comments below you know, what your preferred push-up technique is, you know, in terms of depth, what is your definition of a good push-up? And then we'll see how it measures up to what we see and, and I guess what we sort of feel towards the end of this video. Um, if you go on to enjoy the video, obviously please leave a like below and subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy this information. This video is a little bit of a departure from what we normally do here on the channel where we're normally covering specific injuries and techniques to help resolve those injuries and hopefully throwing in some perspective that potentially isn't out there a lot at the moment. A lot of it's based on what I find works really well clinically when I'm talking with patients one-on-one. -on -one. And to be fair, this push-up technique that we'll talk about towards the end here is the push-up the push technique that I would encourage my patients to do in terms of generating good shoulder function, good strength. Uh, it's a really great functional exercise, a great pushing exercise um, that is a really good one to master. So hopefully you can take the ideas presented in this video into your own training and the really exciting thing is, is that what a lot of people don't realize is that the things that you can do to help prevent injuries, help resolve injuries, are the exact same things that you can do to become a better athlete. They're on the same continuum, they're just on different ends of the scale essentially. So, um, so the idea should be congruent and continuous whether you are rehabbing an injury, whether you're trying to you know, break a world record at something, um, those concepts should apply in both directions. So hopefully you'll see that they will. Um, but the main point is that we want to take those ideal anatomical concepts, the best functional patterns, the optimal function of the body, the best expression of our anatomy, and see how that looks with a push-up. So, so where we'll start with first is we'll start with pelvic positioning. So I think a lot of people will understand that uh, the best pelvic positioning is not an anteriorly tilted pelvis or one where we're all the way sort of dumping backwards at the same time. And again, clinically, the, the way to find your best pelvic position is just to squeeze your butt cheeks tightly. Now, if you're someone who is naturally anteriorly tilted, so the pelvis, the pelvic rim sort of tilts forwards, you'll notice that you'll have a little bit more of a, of a curve in your lower back. Now, that's not great in terms of um, recruiting your abdominal muscles and also jamming up the, the tissues and the joints in your lower back. And also for pelvic floor function, the rest of it is not, not a great position to be anteriorly tilted. So the best way to reorientate that pelvis is to squeeze your butt cheeks. And what that does is if you're anteriorly tilted, it'll pull you back into a good position. Also, we don't want you to feel like you're too far back the other way. We don't want you to forcefully think of rotating your pelvis back because you might go too far past that neutral position. But your body knows best. It knows where it needs to be. So if you squeeze your glutes, it'll reorientate your pelvis into a good position. So that when you're in a push-up position, you're not gonna be in this dumped forward position. You're basically gonna be, if you squeeze the glutes, you're gonna be in a more neutral, stable shape. And again, it allows you to recruit your pelvic floor and your abdominal muscles better, because ideally we know that your back wants to be in a straight position. So, so tip number one, squeeze your glutes, tilt that pelvis into a good position. It allows you to access your pelvic floor and allows you better access to your core muscles to help stabilize that plank uh, phase of the push-up position. The second thing, in terms of your low back position, we know that that pelvis can drag you into a bad lumbar spine shape, but we also know that anatomically, your spine functions best when it's straight. So if you're in a curved position, you don't have access to your diaphragm as well, your shoulders don't function very well. We know that good posture dictates that if you were to pull yourself up nice and tall, your spine is in a relatively neutral position. And again, anatomically, we know that the spine isn't straight because it has natural curves in there to help sort of absorb and resolve forces and things like that. But it's important to understand that if your spine is straight and your glutes are tensed, 
then you will be in the best anatomical position to stabilize that pelvis, to stabilize that trunk, um, to allow yourself to push up and down when you do a push up. So number two is you obviously want a straight back. So make sure that when you're doing that, that your butt isn't up. We wanna make sure that from your shoulders to your toes or from your head to your toes, it should be a relatively straight, a straight line. If you squeeze your glutes, you'll make sure that that pelvis doesn't dump forwards and sag that belly down, which a lot of people can do, particularly when they're fatiguing after high repetitions of push-ups. So the third thing that we want to talk about is the head and neck position. So following on, it's all a continuation of the same spinal talk. If your glutes are squeezed, if you're up nice and tall, if you imagine that someone was to pull your head up into a, um, I guess, in a, into a higher position, it drags you up into a straighter shape. You should feel like your chin tucks in a little bit. We don't want you to go to a point where you're thinking about trying to sort of tuck your chin in or you know, looking up or looking down to force things. If you pull yourself up, things will tend to orientate themselves into a better position. So again, when you're in this basic push-up shape with your glutes squeezed and stretching your head out as long as you can get it, you'll notice that that chin will tuck in a little bit. And then when you're doing a push-up, we don't want you to be looking forwards, obviously, because that'll crane your neck up. Um, and again, if you're doing a lot of them, it's not ideal anatomical sort of function to be in a position where you're jamming that neck up in that shape. So if you're in this starting position with your glutes squeezed, your belly drawn in, and your head sort of pulled away from your toes or from your heels, you should feel like that position is a stable shape. And when you do your push-up, obviously nothing should change from that position when you go up and down. So one of the core components of generating good stability and good strength during a push-up is to make sure that you're in that plank shape from your head down to your heels, you're stretching out along that axis, orientating your pelvis in a good position so that all you're doing when you're doing a push-up is you're just hinging from your shoulders and your elbows and your wrists to lower yourself up and down. We don't want a whole bunch of head and neck things going on. We want you to be a nice stable shape. It's very efficient so that you're uh, elbows, shoulders, and hands have a, a strong platform to function from. Now, I think those first sort of three areas are relatively straightforward, I think, for most people. I think we'd agree that good posture just dictates being in a good pelvic position, good lumbar spine position, you know, good thoracic spine position, head and neck position as well. It's no different to standing in a good posture. It's no different to sitting in a good posture. It's just that instead of being upright, you're essentially horizontal or very close to, to horizontal when you do that. So... So again, I think that's a really easy one to tick off. Now, when we move on to what the shoulders, elbows, and wrists are doing and hands are doing, I think this is where some of the, the conjecture can come into it. But when we're talking about ideal, optimal shoulder function, we have to talk about external rotation of the shoulder. So for those that don't know, the shoulder joint is a very sort of stable joint. It's not stable like the hip is, where it's very sort of bony um, stable. It doesn't have a lot of bony stability where the hip joint is very congruent, where the, the socket of the hip joint is very deep, the head of your femur attaches into that, you've got a lot of bony stability to help transfer a lot of the forces that are transferred from your trunk to your legs and vice versa. Your shoulder basically is used more to interact with the world than the hip is. So it sacrifices some bony stability for mobility. So we can move our arms in all these different directions. But what it needs to help sort of create that stability is external rotation force through the rotator cuff, through the capsule and the soft tissues to increase that sort of muscular stability at the joint. So what we don't realize, what a lot of people don't realize is we do a lot of external rotation exercises with a band to really improve the strength of that shoulder joint. But to wind up that shoulder joint, it's at its most stable and its most congruent when we've externally rotated that position. So for anyone who goes to the gym a lot and does a lot of bench press, you'll recognize, you'll recognize this as holding onto the bar and trying to break, break that bar, trying to create that external rotation force at the shoulder joint to give you more stability and a stronger platform to move that weight in any way that you need to. So we wanna make sure that we recruit those same ideas for the push-up. So what that basically looks like is when we're in a push-up position, we wanna make sure that we're externally rotating those shoulders. So what that looks like is instead of your elbows pointing sort of at 90 degrees, you'll actually find that when you create that external rotation, the elbows will almost be pointing behind you. So they're not directly behind you. 
but they'll be very close to being sort of directly behind you, at the very least less than 45 degrees as opposed to 90 degrees. And how that looks in a push-up position is when you've got your good push-up position and you externally rotate those elbows, when you lower yourself down, you actually find that your elbows will track close to your body. They'll track close to your body as opposed to out to the side, which a lot of people tend to find when they do push-ups. It's a really important point because... If you're doing a push-up and you feel that your elbows are flaring out, which again is really common, it's the same with bench press, then you're at a far less mechanical disadvantage than if your elbows are tracking closer inwards. So again, we don't just want to have your elbows and turn this into like a delto push-up or a shoulder and a tricep push-up. You want to have your hands in a good position, which we'll cover in a second. We want to create that rotational stability and hold on to that stability while we're going up and down in a push-up. And the byproduct of that is that your elbow will be more closely connected to your side than it would if you're out in this position, which is a less stable joint, a uh, stable position. So, and the interesting thing about that is if you're not used to putting your hands on the ground and creating that stability, like, you know, twisting that ground apart or breaking the bar if you're doing a, a bench press, if you're not used to that, then you might find that initially this may fatigue you faster than if you're in this position, purely because you haven't trained that into yourself yet. But what you'll find is over time, your ceiling of capacity, your ability to do more push-ups or um, push more weight in the gym, for example, will be higher when you're in this position as opposed to this position, purely because you're not respecting the positional integrity or the best sort of torque position of the shoulder. Um, in this position compared to this one. So ideally the best push up from an anatomical perspective will have your elbows tracking more closely to your side than you will when they're out in this position. And if, if you're not sure of how that feels, give it a go and you'll hopefully feel that when you've engaged those muscles and held that tension in the shoulder, you will feel stronger or at least more stable and together while you do that. Even if your numbers take a small hit to begin with, they should shoot ahead of the other technique in short time once you practice that and, and sort of train that into a little bit more. So it's a really important part of that conversation that we need to have is that those elbows will track more closely to your trunk than they would, I think, in a lot of traditional push-ups. So really important point. Now, following on from that, we also need to talk about hand positioning. And it's very similar to a perfect squat where if your feet are straight, you can generate that rotational capacity a lot more through the hips. The same thing with the hands. So when you've got your hands in a push-up position, we need to make sure that your fingers are pointing relatively straight up and down in that position. Because if we don't, if your hands are twisted out a little bit more, you can try this yourself and you'll feel this, you won't be able to generate the same amount of tension in that shoulder joint as you will if your hands are straight. So again, it just gives us a platform to connect with the ground and then create that stability over the top of the hand and then just lower yourself up and down from that position. So again, ideally in a mechanical sense, having your hand straight will allow you to generate more stability at the shoulder, which again gives you more endurance, more strength over time, gives you a stronger platform to achieve what you want to achieve with your push-ups. And again, the through line amongst all of these ideas is that when we respect and try and sort of promote optimal body mechanics, we're also decreasing the risk of injury. Because if you are sort of in this less ideal shape, then your shoulders are more likely to dump into a bad position, uh, particularly if it's a position that you adopt throughout the day um, without realizing it. So, so again, once we've sort of connected the, the spine, that lengthened spine with the pelvis in a good position, we're generating that rotational stability at the shoulder, the hands in a good position, the other thing that I think is important to talk about here is we want to make sure that your shoulder blades are in a good position. So a lot of people can do a push-up from, a, I guess, a, a protracted position where your shoulder blades are wrapping around your trunk and lifting your chest up off the ground. And that's okay to do, but ideally we know that the shoulder functions best when the shoulder blades are back in a good position. So you have access to a lot of the shoulder blade musculature, uh, the orientation of the shoulder joint itself is best in space. And it's really important because we've done this before on the channel, but the idea here is if your shoulder blades are sort of pushed forwards, then when you drop down, it's very easy to dump into a, I guess, an anteriorly tilted shoulder position. And that's not great for your bicep tendon. It's not great for your rotator cuff. It's also not a very efficient position. One that obviously can, can generate some discomfort and some injuries down the track, but... I guess more importantly for a lot of healthy shoulders, 
it just robs you of performance. So if your natural ceiling was 50 push-ups before you failed, if you're doing it from this position, you might find that you only get to 35 or 40 potentially. Um, and that's obviously not what we're looking for when designing the ideal push-up. So what we can do to counteract that, and again, we know that having your shoulders back is a better functional shape than shoulders forwards. So if you let your chest sink through, so we're not dropping yourself down, but if you lower your chest down so you feel like your shoulder blades slide back and together a little bit, then we want to create that external rotation at the shoulder. So we're making sure that we're sliding down, externally rotating, and you'll feel like it's a really, really stable shoulder position to push from. It's a really unique feeling that you won't get unless you're really trying to engage, rotate, and then lower yourself down. <coughs> so just to recap those main points, Anatomically, we know that a good pelvic position um, allows you access to your pelvic floor, core strength, hip strength, all this sort of stuff. So squeezing your glutes to pull that pelvis back into a good position allows you to engage your pelvic floor, allows you to engage your core muscles to create this really strong plank position that will just help you drop down and up when you're doing push-ups. We can make sure that you're in a good spinal position by pulling your head away from your heels, really lengthening and elongating that position pulling you into a good shape. Again, we're trying to promote that ideal plank position so that you can just lower yourself up and down with your shoulders. Ideal shoulder position dictates that having shoulders back allows you to recruit more musculature. It's better for injury prevention, muscular performance. It's all in the same conversation. So shoulders back and then creating that external rotation on a fixed hand pointing forward. So we don't want to turn them out. So to make sure that you're in that position Puffing. So you can do those push-ups um, to the best of your phys you know, physiological capacity. Now, the final thing that I wanted to touch on with this, I guess, optimal push-up position is depth. And I think the depth of a good push-up is something that a lot of people sort of argue about online. And I think it, it really does depend on what your goal is and what you feel is acceptable. Ultimately, um, I have my own ideas as to what a, an ideal push-up depth is but it's born out of what I see functionally in clinic, more so than any sort of personal preference. And for me, um, an ideal push-up is one that engages your musculature through full range of motion. So we know, similar to a deep squat, that if you don't use the deeper ranges um, of your physiology, if you don't get down to a deep squat often, then your ankles, your knees, and your hips can suffer for that long term. They, you don't use that depth, so obviously you sort of lose that ideal capacity of that depth. So same thing with a push-up position. We can use full depth of a push-up to engage your musculature through full range so that when you go about your day-to-day -day life, you have access, uh, better access to that range and strength and stability in that range than you would if you were doing a half push-up or a, a speed push-up in that uh, for that example. So. So for me, with all that being said, based on everything that we've discussed, if your pelvis is in a good position, you're stretched out, you've got your core and your pelvic floor engaged, shoulder blades are back, elbows screwed around on a hand that's facing forwards, then all essentially you'll be doing is just dropping down as low as you can go and then coming back up again. Now obviously when you get down to the bottom of a push-up, you don't want to rest and relax, but you just want to make sure that you get down to that position, touch, and then come up again. And basically, it's trying to make sure that you're engaging all of those muscles, all of those positions, all the way up and down the whole time. And guarantee that it may not necessarily feel easy to begin with, mainly because your body's trying to juggle a whole bunch of potentially new things, particularly the elbow position. That's often a challenge for a lot of people. But for me, clinically, that touches on all the... The things that I would need, those main joints and those main areas to do to, to function optimally when we're recovering from an injury, but also trying to improve performance. So that's essentially how it looks when we put it all together in the form of a push-up. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Uh, I don't know why I'm puffing. I probably did like six push-ups in total, um, but talking's hard. So the, the main thing that I wanted to get across today is that there's definitely a whole range of opinions and a whole range of interesting takes on what makes the perfect push-up. But hopefully, as you can see with what we've just discussed, if we just base it on what each area loves the most and how it functions best, when we put all that together, the ideal push-up position is relatively straightforward. So whether you can do that instinctively straight away or not, it may take a little bit of practice, or it might take a couple of goes or a number of reps to really feel comfortable doing that. But you'll hopefully find that the more you do that particular shape, 
you might see that if you've hit a ceiling with your push-ups, then you might be able to bust through that ceiling because you're now starting to respect that an, uh, anatomy a little bit more than you may have before without realizing it. So, so I think the, the, one of the, the next videos that I wanna do as well is just trying to give you guys some ideas on how to problem solve um, push-up related pain. So if you're getting shoulder pain or neck pain or, or back pain or something like that, there'll be some very specific things, some tightness of somewhere, some weakness of somewhere, um, so, you know, some habits in your day-to-day -day life that will transfer into this and that will help you sort of uh, help make that shape that I was just showing you easier to perform and more comfortable and less pain-free to do. So, so if you want to engage with that sort of stuff, let me know in the comments below and obviously subscribe to the channel just so you can get that video and, and the other videos that we're going to put out um, as soon as they drop. Uh, and also I'd appreciate your support because obviously I'd love for this channel to grow into something special. Um, hopefully the videos on the channel already are a testament to the kind of thinking and the kind of information that I'm happy to give out to you guys. Uh, I would really love to see that reach more people. So any um, help you can give would be much appreciated. Um, but until the next video, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.